Hi everyone, it's Bev DeBono and I have Frame Punches Part 2 because I love them so much. This is a technique that I want to show you which is frame punches in the corners. Um, last week we did the frame punch fold over hack which was a really fast one where we punch the frame and we fold it over to make a beautiful page. Today, I wanna to show you one where we're gonna make um, a big frame and then we're gonna cut the borders, uh, cut them into borders so that you can do a double page spread from one frame punch. Uh, frame punches are different from regular punches. Oh, this is one I just did with the um, really pretty flowers and I punched this out of shimmer. I just loved it. It was so pretty. These are the flowers that are in that embellishment buffet that's um, that special that's going on right now. So those are beautiful uh, flowers. But um, with the frame punches, they are a little different from the other punches because on the back of the frame punch, when you turn it over, the punch itself fits totally into the space that's being punched. And it's the same picture each time. So the repeat on the frame punch is a two inch repeat. And you'll see that as we as we go along. So over the last couple of years, Creative Memories has come out with a total of 11 frame punches. So these are the frame punches, petal, baroque, arch border, geometric, snowflake, dollop arch, Spider webs, cloud frame, damask flourish, pumpkin patch, and spring leaves. So currently, I believe there are five that are still available. Um, one of them is the um, spider web and spring leaves, geometric, dollop arch, and damask flourish. But you can use any of the frame punches to do this technique. So I'm gonna show you what makes a frame punch different and why we make a frame with it. And again, this is the, these are the pages. This is what we are making. And I'm gonna show you a real fun thing on that as well. And I'm gonna show you about um, cutting this out and then making another two pages. So let's get started. And I'm going to use the spring leaves frame punch. And I'm going to uh, use some of the papers from uh, National Scrapbook Day. So you need a base, you need some base papers. And usually I would take a cardstock or something very tonal. You don't want your base to be fighting with your frame because your frame is popping through. So on this particular one, which is Life at the Lake, I used a very, very um, soft tonal here for the base of that so that my frame punch could pop through and it wasn't um, fighting with it. This is uh, the shimmer paper on a blue cardstock. And this one is a combination of some various Creative Memories uh, collections um, that they've had. So you see very tonal background, very, very tonal for your base because you want your frame to show through. Okay, then you want to pick a paper that's going to be either in your center, but you don't have to, to have a paper in the center. Um, and then you want to pick a one paper that you're going to um, punch out your frame. Normally, when we punch on a punch, a border punch, we start on the black line between the words creative memories. But on the frame punches, when you look on the shelf here, there's a little silver line, the little silver line, and that is the line that we're going to start punching on. Okay, so we're not gonna put our paper under the punch here. 
We're going to put our paper starting at the silver line. All right, and we're going to put our paper in starting at the silver line. Push it all the way towards the back. <clears throat> I'm just going to do it on, on this. It'll be easier for me to clear up the debris. Okay, all the way to the silver line on the shelf. And we're going to punch five times. So punch once, then move it over until the design that you just punched matches the design on the shelf of your punch. And punch five times. Okay, and now I'm just going to, it's much faster for me to clear it when it's not, the debris is not on my mat, a little easier to clear off. So now you have these two pieces that are sticking up on both sides like this, and that's fine. What we wanna do now is turn our paper and now start with that edge that's sticking up. That is the one that's going to go on that line on your shelf. Okay, so put that on the line on your shelf and then punch five times. Match your idea, I mean, match your uh, picture and punch five times. Do not punch all the way through because you won't, it won't line up. Okay, so five times. And you see what a beautiful edge that makes. What a really pretty edge that makes, especially in that corner right here. Put it on this so you can see it right in that corner. How pretty is that? All right, turn it over. Not turn it over, but um, turn it to the right. Line your line, um, your edge of your paper, that piece that's sticking up again to the line on the shelf and punch, punch five times. Now you will be getting these little one inch squares that come out and these are good to do little, um, you know, I do pages with these and I just alternate the one inch, one inch squares all around the borders of pages and they make really fun and fast, fast pages. Let me clear my debris out of here. With the border punches and with something that's this intricate, so you have a lot of little pieces here, it's good to clear your debris frequently. So I try to clear it after every edge because you don't want those little pieces jamming up under your punch here and then preventing your paper from sliding, sliding over. Okay, so once you get it lined up and you've got your punch, punch five times again. Okay, clear your debris. <clears throat> now, sometimes with these little little pieces, um, and but not for this one in particular, but I know with the spider web and with the damask flourish, you can cut these little pieces in half like this and they can become little um, edges for your photos. Not specifically this one, but damask flourish, I know you could do it on and especially with spider web. Okay, let's do our last one. Line your edge up to the line on the shelf. And we're going to punch it all the way um, five times. <clears throat> so the repeat, the two inch repeat is very important so that you're able to get that beautiful, those beautiful corners at the edges. Okay, and this on its own is a beautiful uh, design. Just putting that beautiful frame just like that 
on your page. But I want to stretch it and put it into two pages. And so what I'm going to do now is show you a little trick where we're going to cut on the diagonal. So I'm going to cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut three to three. Let me use this paper, you can see it better. I'm going to cut one, two, three designs, one, two, three designs. I'm going to cut on this diagonal. Okay, three designs and three designs. That's going to get cut. Then I'm going to cut two and two. Then I'm going to cut three and three. And then I'm going to cut two and two. And that will give me four separate, um, four separate corners so that we can um, actually use it to frame a double page spread. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, well, we're gonna take our trimmer and we're going to take our frame that you just made. Okay, and maybe it's easier to start with the, the two first. So I'm gonna count two designs and then two designs. And I'm going to, this is where I'm going to cut it. And if you feel more comfortable drawing a line right there and hand cutting that, you can. But you can do this on your trimmer because we have the sight lines on the side of our trimmer. So I'm going to put it in my trimmer and I'm going to line up. I'm gonna count one, two, one, two, putting it on its side. Okay, and I'm going to line up where I want my blade to stop cutting. So I want my blade to stop cutting on this line here. So I'm going to put that section there on that line. And then I want my blade to stop cutting right about there. And I'm going to line that up to my to the line. Okay, so you've got to get where you're cutting right on your cut line. Now, if you're not so sure about it, not to worry, don't cut all the way through. Okay, and then just take it and clip it with your micro tip scissor. All right, so you see, I didn't cut it all the way through. I just had that little pieces left at the corners. And that I'm going to cut that with my micro tip scissor. So in case you're not 100% sure about it, that's what you could do. Okay, so I have now cut out the two from there. Ooh, maybe I like this brown side with that paper instead. Okay, now I have three. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three. So now it's actually easier because I know where my cut line is going to be. My cut line is going to be right here, right at that intersection right here. And I'm gonna go straight across to the three cut line. On the diagonal, move your paper down so that you, you're lining it up where your cut line is at your cut line corresponds to a line on your trimmer, so you know where that your blade is going to cut. And to make it make sure that it's straight, I line my paper up right on a line, a grid on the trimmer. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut that. And if again, if you're not sure how far to, to move your blade, I know where my bottom one is gonna start. My top one is going to end about here, which is at the two inch mark here. And so I know in order to get that blade to stop there, I'm going to have to get the bottom of my housing at the three inch mark, which is here, or the one inch mark, which is up there, the top at the one inch mark. But again, if you're not so 100% with it, don't go all the way to that mark, lift it up, and if you have to just clip off that ending little, little edge, then do that. 
right? So now you have a big one and a little one. You have a two inch and a, and a I mean, a two, uh, two design and a three design. And now we're gonna move our paper to where we have two and two. And I'm gonna put it on my cut line, right where it's gonna cut, right at the edge of that, where the punch stops, line it up with on the side. And if you need to clip it, just clip that. And now guess what you have left? You have a three and three, turn it to the side and line it up on your cut line where your punch ends. Use the grid on the bottom or the top to line your paper so you know you're straight. And there you go. And you can use a smaller piece as a mat um, for something else. So this is what you have. You now have, I'm gonna turn this into a two page spread. And now I'm debating whether I like the brown side or the green side more. So you want your taller pieces up at the top, your bigger pieces. I think I'm gonna go with the green, it's a little brighter. You want your larger piece up at the top and your smaller pieces down on the bottom. And these will go really nicely in your corners. Okay, so now you've got your frame punch in your corners. And before I put it down, what I want to do is I, I like to just make sure that I'm at the right angles. So I'm just going to put my ruler here. I'm going to put my ruler at like, oh, eight to eight. That's a nice for one of these top corner ones. That's not where your piece is going to end up, but you could have it end up there if you want. I'm just using it as a marking to make sure that when I put it on my page, it's not coming like, it, I'm not so crooked that it's gonna end up like that. Okay, so I'm trying to square off the corner uh, really well. So I'm just using the ruler as a guideline. Maybe if I used a different color ruler, it'd be easier to spell. Okay, so I'm just doing it eight, um, on the on the larger one, maybe eight to eight, just so I get the idea of where the where that diagonal is going to be, so that I know where to line up this piece. So as I said, so it's not so crooked um, that makes it difficult for my photos. Okay, and you want to put it as close to your edge as possible. And then this way, like I said, I'm I'm really seeing. So you see the edge here of my frame is going in the same um, amount, same diagonal. Okay, now on the bottom one, what I'm going to do is line it, line my ruler up probably to maybe a six by six or six and a half by six. I'm going to go six by six. So you see, if I hadn't used my ruler and I just put this, I would have thought, oh, that's going to, that's going to go right like that. But by putting my ruler at six and six, I can see that it's not really squared off. So that's why I'm using the ruler for this. Okay. So now we're going to tape down your bottom one. And again, I'm just using it as a guide. If you want to put it at the six inch mark, you can, but um, I'm using it at my, as my guide to make sure that my spacing is well. And then turning it to your other side, I'm gonna again, do it at the six to six mark. And again, lining up my angle. So I know that my angle is going to be 
um, even with my photos when I put my photos there. And then the top one, I'm gonna go eight to eight, or at this side, it's gonna be four to four, which was eight to eight on the other side, on the left side. Okay, and again, I'm going to just, I'm using repositionable tape on all the um, openings on the leaf, the frame punch, and because I'm getting uh, little micro dots there, which is what's going to adhere it to my to my page. Okay, so again, line it up so that you've got your line and you're you have the same amount of distance and that your angle is the same. Okay, so this is really your page. And from here, you could um, you could put your photos on here. Um, these are four by four by sixes, four by fours, um, and you could um, definitely play with these as far as um, which way you want your your pictures to go, your photos uh, to go. So this is one way that you can use it. Another way that you can use it is by um, adding different shapes to it. So um, this one happens to be with the spider web punch and uh, various Halloween, Creative Memories Halloween ones. And you see again, the same, it's the same technique. You've got the three frame punch on the top, the two frame on the corner. And then you've got what it looks like when you have it um, side to side. So this is the spider web punch, frame punch. But I wanna show you another idea with this um, as far as setting it off. And that is putting, um, putting a beautiful piece in the middle like this and then building on top of there. And I'm going to show you a trick for that so that you can create another page in addition um, to this. So in order to do this, you need a nine by nine square. Okay, and normally you would think, oh, I'm just going to cut nine inches and nine inches across. But if we take those dimensions for a nine by nine and actually make a hollowed out frame, an inch and a half hollowed out frame, we will be able to then use um, not only what we cut out here for the inside um, base here, but then we'll also have an outer frame for the outside as well. So this way we're not wasting so much paper. If we just cut a nine by nine square like that, we're just left with strips, but by cutting, let's see, by cutting a hollowed out frame from your inside piece, then you're able to take those hollowed frames and make two more pages, okay? And that's from the hollowed frame and the piece inside is what we used for the inside piece of this. So let's find a piece that you're going to use if you want to do this technique, which I, I just love because I just think it's it's so pretty and it really uses your paper um, wisely. So I'm going to use this um, really pretty all over floral pattern. This happens to be from uh, National Scrapbook Day this year. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an inch and a half hollow frame. Okay, so inch and a half is a little more tricky than the one inch because the one inch we know, we just put the paper at the one inch and then we just slide it down. So with the inch and a half hollow frame, we're going to put our paper to the right hand side at the inch and a half mark. Inch and a half mark. Now I want my blade 
my blade to cut at the inch and a half line, which means that white line is where my blade is cutting. If my blade is at the inch and a half white line, then the bottom of my housing has to be at two and a half. Okay, so line the bottom of your housing at the two and a half mark at the top. Two and a half mark. Okay. And let's put one of our binder clips in the back. And we've got these cute little creative memories, little yellow binder clips. I'm gonna put a binder clip in the back of my housing. Okay. What we're doing essentially is making a gate. I mean, a fence for the, um, for the blade. Now the bottom, I want it to be an inch and a half in. So I know that my blade has to end at 10 and a half inches at 10 and a half inches, which is here. This is where the blade has to end. But the bottom of my housing has to end at 11 and a half inches because there's one inch difference between the white line, which is where my blade cuts and the housing. So let's move the bottom of my housing to the 11 and a half inch mark. And I'm gonna put another cute little binder clip at that 11 and a half inch mark. Okay, so essentially what I've done is I've created a fence um, here or a barrier so that my trimmer doesn't trim all the way through. Okay, so that again, the top has to line up at the bottom of your housing at two and a half. Put your clip in the back and on the bottom of your paper, the bottom of your housing has to line up with 11 and a half and put your clip at 11 and a half. Now we're ready to cut. Press down, we're just cutting between our binder clips. Lift up, move to the left, inch and a half mark, cut between our binder clips, lift up, inch and a half mark, Cut between our binder clips, turn to the left, inch and a half mark. Okay, so you see now I have my nine by nine piece that's going to go in the middle of that page, but now I also have an inch and a half hollow frame that I can use to create a whole nother page, which will be a lot of fun. Okay, so while I have my binder clips there, I'm just gonna do another one. And then this way I can do a double page spread, inch and a half, inch and a half. See how fast it is once you have your trimmer set up and your binder clips in place. Okay, then remove your binder clips so that you can move along. Okay, so for this particular page, I am going to, um, this didn't cut all the way through. So for this particular one, I'm going to now just put my nine by nine piece on. on my page. I'm gonna make this really go really quick. So I'm just gonna show this to you really quickly. So I'm just gonna put a little dab there. And this is centered an inch and a half in on all sides. And then really quickly, you can just add some, um, some titles or some cute little, these are some of the critters that come with the National Scrapbook Day um, papers and things like that. So just like that. And then again, just adding a few mats. So with something like this, you could do um, one big one and a couple small ones if you want or four four by fours or four by sixes. You can put them in any direction 
um, that you want. So this is a really fast, um, fast, fast uh, page and a really pretty one um, as well. So that is um, those two pages. And then with your extra that we just cut out from the outside, you now have pages, um, more to make another double page spread. And these just all go together really, really well. And yep, again, just putting some of your um, nice little pieces there. And this could be either all four by fours or again, four by sixes. You can also overlap like that, move them over and fit. If you have other photos, you can go over onto your border and make it look like that. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed this technique. This was the frame punched corners, um, a little different idea for the frame punches. Tell me which one you like the, like the best. We've got the National Scrapbook Day Critters. We've got uh, Life on the Lake. This is really cute collection. I did this really pretty one with the, the flowers, the embellishment flowers now that are in that um, special with the shimmer paper. Did an autumn one. So I just love this technique, as you can tell, and couldn't stop um, making pages. It looks different each time. This happened to be the same, uh, the same frame punch, but you can also um, have the same effect um, without that middle piece, but the same technique with the frame punch. So I hope you enjoyed my class. I hope to see you again soon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Bev De Bono Designs. And I have a lot of videos up there. Tell me which page you like the best and um, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.